Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is a podcast dedicated to helping you have the successful accounting, bookkeeping, and tax business you desire. The show is actually committed to helping you as an accounting professional confidently and competently offer quality accounting services to get paid what you're worth. Each of the episodes is a conversational discussion about tips and tricks that you can apply in your business to actually help you start and build the successful accounting business that you desire. In this, we'll cover topics such as marketing, lead generation, ideal clients, pricing, price strategies, accounting services, added value services, workflow, practice management, staff training, client onboarding, client relations and retention. We'll talk about getting testimonials and reviews, social proof, a variety of things that you can use in your business to actually ensure that you have the premier accounting firm in your area. So I invite you to listen to this podcast, the other episodes, and obviously subscribe. I'm your host, Roger Connect, president of Universal Accounting Center. For more than 20 years, I've been working with accounting professionals to help them accomplish just that, build the premier accounting firm. In this, I've had the pleasure of meeting amazing individuals and working with them to build their dreams. And I'd like to share with you some of those tips and insights in each of these episodes. Today, we have an amazing guest. She's someone I've known for years and I've worked with on occasion. She's someone that you're going to find to be both spunky and engaging. TC is basically short for T- Teresa, Teresa Clark, I got tongue tied there. And TC is the co founder and CEO of On Fire Ignites. TC actually stands for totally crazy, and she'll live right up to that. Her business ideas are as unique and unconventional as she is. She has interviewed over a thousand business owners to get testimonials for companies. Using what she has learned, she has designed the secret of using your client's words methodology. So welcome to the show, TC. Thank you so much. Also, TC stands for too cute. Too cute, totally crazy, totally awesome, but there you go. Let's do this. All right. So first of all, I know that you work with Bob and... Uh, you have an interesting dynamic there. I want to just go back to what caused you two to start the company? There was a fire in Colorado Springs and I had a magazine and it failed because we lost a portion of our city. And so Bob came to me and says, you know what? I think we should start a company together. And by the way, secret, secret, Bob's my son. Don't tell anybody. And uh, we have another partner. And he was being Mr. Smart Alec, and he said, fire has to be in the name. So that's where On Fire came from. (laughs) Now, that I did not know. That's a pretty good one. Now, Bob is notorious for wearing something. What does he always wear? He wears hats. He is um, number one in the world on LinkedIn for wearing hats. There you go. So he is a great guy as well. I've, I've met him a number of times, and so it's it's good to work with Bob. But I'm excited to speak with you. So your business, obviously going from the magazine to On Fire, On Fire Ignites, what's the purpose of the business? What do you actually do? Well, On Fire as a company, we do have unique solutions to weird problems, to different problems. And so what we're going to be talking today is about testimonials. And we have a system called My Clients Say, and that's what I'm going to share. Now, one of the things that I think is fascinating about this, because I've used uh, TC services, is there's a lot of power in you, the, the owner of your company, explaining what you do, what your services are, what the benefits are that the client receives when they use your services. It's it's one thing for you to talk about your product and service with the passion that we all bring for the companies we represent. There's something else to be said about the customer, a past customer, in their own words, speaking of your product or service. It's essentially a peer of the, the potential customer now speaking of what their experience was of you. How, why do you think that's so different than the sales presentation that we all give as we run our companies? Well, I'll tell you what one of my clients told me. And by the way, I do have a lot of introvert clients. And one of the things they absolutely hate is tooting their own horn or talking about themselves. It's very uncomfortable for them. So when they start talking about what my clients say, they sound totally different. They sound more confident. Um, People really feel that when they hear, when I tell you, you know, this is what one of my clients told me, you know, before I always felt kind of weird when I was talking about my company. Now I don't. All I do is just share my client stories. It makes it very relaxing. Yeah. And one of the things that I find that's very appropriate for the accounting profession 
is so often when we're talking about marketing and sales strategies, it's inevitable most people will bring up that a core part of their growth and how they're acquiring clients is referrals. And it's only natural to say that not only is a person referring your services and suggesting a business owner speak with or reach out to you, but they're typically at the same time saying why. They're sharing their experience. They're sharing why they feel of all the people they're going to suggest this particular product or service. And in this case, it's the accountant. Why do you think as the referrals are given that the testimonials become such an important part of that experience? Well, one of the things I'll tell you, another client told me is that people want to refer you. They don't want to sell for you. So one of the things that they have increased their referrals dramatically because they have a video of their clients. So now their referrals, instead of trying to say why to buy from them, Uh they just, oh, let me show you this, send you this video of what their clients have to say. Yeah. So what you're describing is rather than taking the time to get into the features and the nuances of what the service or product is, what we're able to actually do is just let someone else explain their experience in using that product or service. And it's much more natural and it's not so intrusive. So I know you've identified kind of a process or a secret to getting really good testimonials. And it's the way you ask questions. It's the way you actually get the customer to kind of share their experience. What could you tell me about that experience that someone has when basically sharing that testimonial? Well, before we go there, I want to give you something that People kind of, my, what my clients tell me, okay? So everybody wants to talk about their client benefits. They want to talk about their product. They want to talk about how amazing it is. And one of my clients told me, she goes, and here's what I say. It's a so what? Who cares? The only reason people hire you is to solve a problem. And if you can figure out specifically what problems you solve, And I'll give you an example. I have one client that her clients are engineers. So she told me, she says, well, their problem is they don't communicate well. Well, yes, it is, but it's not what sucks. What sucks for them is people think that they're rude, think that they're not a team player, misconstrue what they say. So now she went back to her clients and she got quotes from her clients talking about that. And here's how you do it. So if I were to tell you, Roger, say, hey, Roger, give me a testimonial. Uh Uh-huh. That's uncomfortable. You have to think about what to say, right? But if I say, hey, Roger, let me share with you what my other clients have to say and get your feedback. Can you see the difference of that feel? Mm -hmm. So you basically figure out what problems you solve specifically. You go to your clients and you get the quotes about those problems. And the way you do that is you say, other clients told me that their books were a mess and very stressful for them. And then they told me after working with me, everything's very smooth. So when you are getting a testimonial, it's very important to get the before and the after. So before working with you and after working with you. So again, the first step, figure out what problems you solve. Second step, go to your clients and share with them what other clients have told you. Uh And then create what we call bricks. So most people think that a testimonial is one thing. You go get a testimonial. We don't believe that. We believe it's like Lego bricks. And each brick is a problem that you solve. And if you focus on what problems do you solve and you get quotes specifically where your clients share how you solve the problem for them, that converts. So one of the things that I'm taking from this, and I've experienced this with you time and time again, and it's literally become a part of our conversations with our own customers, is just like you said, first of all, share what was your situation like at the time you chose to use the services? What what was the problem that you were experiencing that caused you to want to buy the product or service? And it's interesting as people then kind of reflect back, well, this was the situation I was in. This is the challenge I was facing. This is what I was trying to accomplish, they're, they're able to oftentimes kind of describe well what that situation was for them to make that decision to purchase your product or service. And what's fascinating is to the person who later hears this, that's a potential customer, they're oftentimes able to identify with that situation because it's oftentimes the one they're actually in themselves at that moment. And then what happens is the 
person then goes on to explain, this is my experience using the service. This is what I've experienced in the sense of them onboarding me, taking care of me. And then what they go on to then answer is, this is then the outcome. This is how my situation is different or better now. And so they're able to then explain, this is my current situation, the end result of using the product or service. And the beauty of that is the person hearing the testimonial that's considering using the services, they've now heard, this is my current situation that I can relate to. They were once where I am today. And now listen to where they are in the future them being now, but more importantly, where I could be if I just now do what I'm considering doing. So there's this timeline of, I can identify with their current situation. I can identify with where they've ended. I want that experience for myself. I'm going to then pay for the product or service. And I think what you just structured there as a testimonial format is so helpful because it actually addresses the needs of the of the potential customer. Yeah. One of the other things too, is you've got to really realize that there's a difference between client benefits and and the problems that you solve. Uh And I'll give you an example. One of my clients told every testimony that she got, she's a business consultant was how well she listened. Right. And I told her, I said, well, let's just toss all those because nobody cares. Nobody's (laughs) going to write you a check by the way, showing my age because you listen to them. So we went back and figured out what problem she fixed what sucked for her clients what doesn't suck anymore and she directed it when she called the client she didn't say how did you feel before she said here's what other clients told me before they worked with me here was their problem after they worked with me here's what happened tell me your story Uh very directed is really really important Another thing is I had a client tell me, she goes, you know, TC, you're the best brainstormer I've ever met. How come you don't have any testimonials for brainstorming? Well, nobody pays me for brainstorming. Okay. Another person said, you know, we started, I also help people create their their presentations. And the presentation is very different. It's I share what problems other people have run into. So you share. Here's the problems other businesses have run into. Now. Roger, if I say, is this your problem? You're going to be direct. It's uncomfortable. But if I say, you know what? I'm hearing from other business owners. This is their problem. It gives you permission to say yes. Mm -hmm. That's my problem. Okay, then then you share what your clients have to say about it. That's pretty much the presentation. So when I got into one person, we got to her presentation, and she wanted to tell all her credentials. And I stopped her and I says, let me ask you a question. What are my credentials? What's my background? She had no idea. None of my clients know my background because it doesn't matter. The only thing reason that they bought from me is because I solve a problem. So one of the things that I say, and I drive everybody crazy because I say this and it just makes everybody go nuts. Everyone says that you buy from people you know, like, and trust, right? That's right. That is a common phrase that's used. Okay. It's a load of crap. And and so everyone goes, what? No, no. I said, so so let me give you an example. You have to sell your house. It's not an if, you have to sell it. Your friend has their real estate license. They just got their real estate license. Someone in town, you know, has been selling houses in three days and getting better pricing for it. Who do you hire? Most people hire the person that is going to close the house fast. Do you know them? No. Do you like them? You have no idea, but you trust them. And the reason that you trust them is based on what other people had to say. We are no longer, I'm, you know, I'm 50, I'm 59. There was a time where you had to get, you know, no like and trust. You had to know everybody that you're working with because you didn't have a lot of choices, but now you have tons of choices. So it's based on what other people say. That's why people buy. Can you solve my problem? And you want other people to say that. So what you're sharing here, and I think this is very important for our listeners to understand, is you just a moment ago spoke of the no like, and trust. And for years, that was definitely a very big component of the sales process, but it has evolved. And I'm going to explain it very quickly in, in what I think is a, is a important thing to understand. And it's that, let's say five, 10 years ago, a referral from your mother, your neighbor, your sister, your girlfriend might have meant, 
a lot of uh, of uh, had a lot of influence because if somebody said use this dentist go to this restaurant buy this food most people would listen to their mom their girlfriend their neighbor because these are people they know they like and they trust and they feel that they have similar interests and so forth but what's happened in the last number of years is with online reviews we've gotten to the point now that it's no longer just the referral that matters it's then the social proof that then confirms the right choice and the social proof evolves to the point that, yes, my mom likes that restaurant, but statistically, I can go on to Yelp or Google or Facebook or some other source, and I can see that of a 1,000 people, this restaurant has gotten a 2.9, and I'm reading reviews as to why there's this concern. So mom had a good experience, but she's one of over a 1,000 people, and the majority are saying that it's not worthwhile. And so what we experience today in society is actually the referrals of these people we know, like, and trust are having less impact on what we buy and purchase. And it's now becoming the social proof that has more of an influence. But I want to take that another step further. You actually say that there's something more, that there is another way of looking at this. You say another thing is, is that people are getting testimonials backwards. What, what does that mean? Okay. So when I say that it's backwards, is this is what I mean, is I can say, hey, Roger, give me a testimonial. And then I get one. And here's what it says. TC was amazing. I really enjoyed working with her. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. You know, think of Char um, Charlie Brown with the adults talking. Okay. It doesn't matter that you like me. It doesn't matter that I'm a nice person. It doesn't matter you enjoyed working with me. The only thing that matters is did I solve your problem? So what I say is you have to figure out what your problems are first and then direct the testimonial to talking about the problems you solve. If you don't, one of my clients told me, he goes, before I was getting things like, Sam, I really like you. Sam's amazing. He goes, it, you know, it made me feel good, but it didn't convert. Prospects didn't care. Once I switched over and started focusing on the problems that I solved, I was converting. So what I'm hearing you say, and, and I can relate to this, is sometimes people believe that the reviews or the testimonials, they're looking for things that are pats on the back. They want to have their customers say that they liked the experience or that they were nice and good, and as you were describing. But what we're looking for is something more substantive, something more specific that will actually help the future customer make their purchase decision. And so what we're trying to do is get that more relevant testimonial that then can assist our sales cycle. Is that a fair assumption? Right, right. You want them to say what sucked, okay, all right, and what is now doesn't suck anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm being very specific. And the reason I, I say not a problem is I go back to what you think is a problem. As an accountant, you think certain things are a problem because they are. And also your clients love you for certain things that prospects don't care about. And I want to keep saying that over and over again because people just, uh, when I work with clients, they go, but this is important. I said, no, it isn't. It's important to your clients, but it's not important to the prospect. That's a very big distinction because they're two different people. Yeah. See, my clients right now, brainstorm, if you asked any of my clients, they would say the brainstorm I do with them is probably the most biggest advantage to hire me. That's what they would say. My prospects don't care. They care that I show people how to get testimonials that convert. They care that I show them how to get a, a presentation a sales presentation that's natural, that's a conversation, not a sales presentation. Mm -hmm. I show them how to have their clients answer their objections. Those are the things that the prospects care about. So I'm curious, as you work with your clients, and they range from people that sell products to people that sell services, and admittedly, accounting is more of a service-oriented business. What's the difference between a testimonial that is product specific versus a testimonial that is service specific? Is there a distinction? Well, I will tell you that I work mostly with services. I would say like 95% of my people sell a service. And the difference is that your service has to fix a problem. And if you're not fixing a problem, then you can sit there and talk to somebody forever, but if you get, and here's the other challenge, all right? So we have two different types of sales. 
We used to have push sell, which is what I grew up on. You know, buy now and give me your objection so I can kill it. Uh-huh. And it was very intense. Then everybody went to this pull sell, which is basically a therapy session. Tell me your deepest, darkest problems so I can fix them. Love it. Okay. The problem with that is people aren't going to tell you, I don't know you. But if you share the problems that other business owners have, they will say, yes, that's me. So we start our presentation by, I don't sit there and say, let me tell you about my clients say and blah, blah, blah. You know, I say, let me share with you what other businesses are telling me that they hate about the sales process. And then I share a problem. Then I say, what do you think? And then they tell me. Sometimes they say, that's not my problem. Okay, well, let's try the next problem. And then I know very quickly if we're a match, because if I go through three or four problems and you don't have any of those problems, then we're not a fit. Next. There you go. You know, one of the things you said earlier is that a lot of the business owners hate selling. And it, it's kind of interesting. I know a lot of business owners are very passionate about what they do for a living and what their customers receive paying for that product or service. So there is a passion that's quite contagious for the customer that they can see the business owner is obviously very good or committed to what they do. But when it gets down to the nuts and bolts, a lot of business owners will say, you know, the selling isn't my favor in the sense of they don't see themselves as salespeople necessarily. But adding testimonials to this whole experience, how do you feel, you know, why do you think it, it's true that the testimonials make that whole process or experience for the business owner a lot more relaxing. I think you were just talking about it, but I want you to emphasize it a little bit more. So we call it my client say. So here's how this all happened. We help people do um, podcasts. Okay. And we were helping them and they came back to me and they said, you know what, I'm getting all these leads. I'm, I'm getting prospects. But when I get to the sales presentation, there was a disconnect, but you don't have a disconnect. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) what do I do? So we started recording me and really paying attention to what I do. And we realized I never say I do anything. I always say my clients say. So when you start only using what your clients say, it changes everything. It changes the tone of your voice. It changes how you talk. If you're only sharing what your clients have to say, it's just a different feel. Mm-hmm. So how does this then transfer into when the sales presentation is over and the offer is extended? How does this then go to overcoming objections where now there's this conversation occurring and the potential customer is expressing concerns or, or reservations? They're asking questions. This is now after the sales offer has been extended. How does testimonials play into that? Okay, so again, we do everything a little differently. (laughs) So one of my clients told me that she absolutely loves that we address the elephant in the room. So right in the middle of our presentation, we say, can I share with you some of the concerns our clients have had? And they go, oh, yeah. Now, remember, we go back to our clients and we get our clients to answer the questions. So, for example, here's a fun one. I always talk to people and I say, okay. So someone referred me, referred you to me, and then they called you back and they said they couldn't afford it. What would you say to them? Well, one of my clients says, are you absolutely crazy? And they have some really great things to say. (laughs) Okay. So in the middle of the presentation, I say, you know, here's the concerns my people have. They either have no money. They don't want to do it right now. You know, there's four of them, right? And I say, then I say, do any of these resonate with you? And as soon as they say, this one does. Then I go and say, well, here's what my clients had to say about that. You know, one of the things that my client, she told me, she goes, I don't answer objections anymore. She goes, my clients do. And it's done in the middle of the presentation. So there's a few things I like about this. One, the burden of the business owner as part of their sales presentation, having to kind of go back and forth like a tennis match, answering questions it can sometimes be very tiresome. And I I almost want to dare say that it's also very, very frustrating. Well, you've got an interested client. They're, They're obviously interested enough to be asking questions. They just have some things that they want to understand better. And who else better to now answer these like you're describing than your current customers, how they would address these current situations. And you said it a moment ago, addressing the elephant in the room, it's maybe just some of the the logistics or the technical aspects of the experience that they're trying to address. 
And here the customers are explaining not only how their experience was, but how it actually was favorable. So the next thing I want to ask is what you're describing here is obviously a complement to the sales process. I shared earlier that the common way that a lot of businesses, uh, accounting firms grow is through referrals. And so this is complementing that referral that's coming with testimonials. I'm, I'm curious, where in the sales process outside of the actual conversation, where are you seeing these testimonials used? Like, is this websites? You talked about podcasts. Uh, are people posting these on YouTube? I mean, where, where are these testimonials typically shared and uh, used? Well, number one, every part of the sales process. Okay, so if you ever look at our website, you will see it's all testimonials. It's, that's pretty much what it is. Um, it's all quotes. Uh, we believe that if you say something on your website and you don't have a quote to back it up, it's irrelevant, shouldn't be on your website. So definitely on your website, on your any type of sales information that you send out. I'll give you another example. A lot of people do, um, you know, networking groups where you stand up and you say, here's what I do. All right. So we say, don't ever get up and say, I'm an accountant. Get up and say, so I want to share with you what one client had to say. And then the next week, I want to share with you what a different, share a different client every single solitary week that you talk. That way people don't get bored. So you can use it for that. There's just so many places. Anytime you're touching a prospect, you should be doing it with a quote. So in our business, we actually have three places that we solicit the testimonial and, and request it. I'm curious what else you would add to this. So the first one is after the purchase cycle. We're interested in getting their feedback on the experience that they went through as to why they are buying the product or service and at the same time, kind of what their experience was. The second is anytime that the customer expresses a great deal of satisfaction for an experience or something that they've just had, kind of an epiphany, anytime that they're just very grateful and they're, and they're in that giving mood of, I'm so so excited about what we've just experienced. I want to capture that. And so I solicit the testimonial then. And then when we're wrapping up the customer experience, so in my line of work, there are, especially with a lot of the business owners we do engagements with, there are these conclusions of the services that we're providing. And in those engagements, they're typically a 12 to 18 month experience. And so at the end of that, as we wrap it up, we want to culminate it with then them sharing this testimonial to essentially do like you were saying a moment ago, what was their experience at the beginning? Why was it that they were looking for the business coaching that we were offering, for example? And then what was the experience over the course of 12 to 18 months for them? And then ultimately, how are things different for them today? What has changed? How is their life better running the business and so forth at this point? And so we we get some great testimonials. When are some other good times to solicit from someone their testimonial and get that review? So one of my clients, what she does is she touches with her clients every two months. So she has a 15 minute conversation with them every single, every two months. And specifically the reason for it is to get a brick. Remember we break them down into bricks. So she keeps track of what bricks she has from each person. And when she talks to them, she says, Hey, Every single time that you touch your client, at the end of the conversation, all you say is, hey, I'd like to get your feedback on something I heard from one of my clients. Would that be okay? You got another brick. There you go. One of my clients says, now I'm getting, I am getting bricks. I am getting testimonials daily. She's up to a couple hundred of them because each person gives her more than one. So every, every single time you talk to your client, you should be getting a brick. So here's a question that I think a lot of my listeners would really want to understand. What is it that you do that obviously as a service can help get these testimonials that are concise and to the point and uh, topical? Well, what we show people is how to get feedback. So first thing, one of my clients told me she loves that she never, ever is going to ask for a testimonial again. She just asked for feedback from what other clients have said. And so she said, it's so much easier to say, hey, can I just get your feedback on um, what other people had to say? The other thing that she told me that was so funny, uh, another client told me, she goes, do you realize that every single time I get someone to give me feedback, they thank me? 
Because let's talk about video testimonials. People say, I can't get video testimonials. Well, yeah, you can. You just get on a Zoom call and you record them in 30 second increments. We show, we show our clients how to do that. But the biggest thing is you share what other clients have to say. And then you ask them for their feedback. And you say that coaching, they don't mind it. So for example, if somebody talks too long, I'll say, you know what? You, here's three things that you said that I really would love to grab. Remember, we're grabbing each thing by itself. If they don't talk too short, I said, you know, can you tell me more about that? It's a conversation. And they feel so relaxed because you're directing the conversation. They don't have to think about what to say. You know, as you're sharing all that, one of the things I can reflect on is years ago when working with you, it was this this epiphany of how natural this kind of a conversation can be. It's just it's just interesting how comfortable the customer becomes as they speak with you as to how they want to just kind of answer your questions. And they're happy to share their experience and share why it was a positive thing and why they're pleased with what they've received. So from an accounting perspective, what's really nice is these customers that we have, we are making a difference in what we're doing. We are helping them with their companies. And it's nice to just kind of have them say all this. And I bring this up because I want to make this point. It's amazing to me that after sharing the testimonial and highlighting the things that the customer has experienced, how much more grateful they are tomorrow as a customer because they're they're able to basically appreciate even more what they explained or articulated in the testimonial they shared moving forward because now they they've highlighted why this is so important to them and it really becomes I think a more solidified customer because They've just verbally had to communicate what it was that excites them about the services they're paying for. And they're now more excited to pay for those services and continue receiving them. So I've actually found that it's even helped with client relationships, having them go through and share a testimonial, if you will, of what they're they're doing. So have you, TC, found that the testimonials have an unexpected result, an unexpected benefit? Yes. And one of the things I will tell you is that is why a lot of our clients are now touching their clients more often. And they're doing quick little meetings with them just to get bricks. Another thing I need to let you know is the more difference that you have made in someone's life, the more transformation that you have made in their business, the harder it is to get a testimonial. Interesting. That is interesting. Because they want to make it perfect. And they kick the can. How many times have you sat down yourself to go write somebody a testimonial and couldn't think about what to write, so you put it down and did something else? They thank you when you give them things. One of my clients said, you know, my clients say things they never thought that they thought about before, but are so glad that they did. And they thank me for jiggling their brain. Well, TC, I think what we're discussing here is something that all the accountants need to be hearing. I think we need to do a much better job of not only capturing these testimonials and more importantly, using them in our business. I like how you said that they're throughout your website, how you mentioned that they can be used in a variety of settings, such as in the sales process. I I feel that not only should we be collecting them, but we should be using them and really helping them be a part of our business cycle, if you will. Because at the end, I think this last point of When they give the testimonial, it helps solidify their continuing to use our services. That's a kind of like the icing on the cake at that point. So this is very, very good. So let me go ahead and break away here for a moment and just mention some things about our sponsors. And I'm going to come back to TC here with some other questions. The the first thing is the company On Fire Ignite is putting together this system. It's called My Clients Say System where TSC is offering to give you a chance to chat with her directly and schedule a time to actually learn more about this new system they have called My Clients Say System. It's where you have a chance to speak specifically with TC and learn more about what you can be doing to not only gather, but also leverage the use of testimonials in your business to get more clients and grow your customer base. The second is that of universal accounting. They're making available a free copy of the book, In the Black. It's a book that all business owners should have. It happens to be the nine principles to make your business profitable, helping you address the short-term, mid-term, and long-term needs of the company that you as the business owner need to be aware of. 
So at this time, go to the episode description and there you'll find the information you need to schedule your time with TC to actually learn more about My Client Say System and at the same time, get your free copy of the book in the black, nine principles to make your business profitable. This will be an excellent addition to your library and something you'll be able to use as you're working with your clients, applying the same principles in your business and theirs. Now, with that being said, uh, TC, there are some questions I'd like to ask you just simply because I'm very curious what you have to say. I know that you've run the magazine business. You've now been working in this business uh, on Fire Ignite for some time. Share with me what is kind of like a, a mantra or a quote that you use to guide your business to keep you focused and grounded on what it is you're trying to do? Is there a quote or a mantra that you follow? My old company was called Very Direct Marketing. So realize that we are very direct. So we are very clear with people on this. If you're looking for someone to help you move the needle in your business, hire us. If you're looking for someone to be a cheerleader, don't hire us. We're very specific on getting things done. And so, you know, when you talk about, you know, the no like and trust, we have to push our clients. And really, one of my clients told me this. She said, you took my, spun me around, made me dizzy, put me in the opposite direction and made my head hurt. So our biggest thing is people say, why are you in business? We're in business to give extremely incredible value for the money that people pay us. That's why we're in business. So the next question is, is who's a mentor that you've had in your life? What is it that they, that they taught you and how have you applied it in your business? Kathy Hadley uh, is a mindset coach and I loved her to death because she was very specific on mindset and did it in a not a woo-woo way, okay? Unfortunately, she passed away, um, but she was definitely a mentor to me and really changed the way I thought about my business. So how did she change it? What was your paradigm that you were using before working with Kathy and then afterwards, how was it different? I truly believe that mindset was for people who wanted to, to have incense burning and you know get out crystals and that kind of thing. So I would not even look at it. And she explained it in a concrete way and gave me tools to change the way I think about money, the way I thought about the business, the way I thought about other people. But she gave me actual tools to do that with. Very good. I like that. Tell me this. What is something you are thankful for? I have to tell you that I'm thankful for my partners. You know, people say, how can you work with your son? I said, well, he's only my son on holidays. And we have a third person that works with us and her name is Mary and she is our operations person. And we always say everybody needs a Mary. And so I'm just really grateful to be able to work with these people and be in such sync with them that I actually don't mind getting up in the morning. <laughs> Very good. I like that. You know, it's amazing how each of us can impact one another's lives for the good or the bad. And it's nice to have those types of influential people in our lives. Not only Kathy, who, whom you've uh, mentioned has passed away, but Mary, as you explained, it's just nice to be around good people. There's that uh, phrase that says we're the sum total of the five people we spend the most of the time with. And ultimately, we need to be that middle person where we're kind of guided and directed by two inspiring individuals in our lives. And at the same time, working with to other people that uh, maybe we need to inspire and kind of be the inspiration to. And so those five people, uh, they really can kind of mold who we are. And it's nice to be with nice, positive people on a daily basis. So first of all, regarding the offers, our sponsors are on Fire Ignite and they're putting together this opportunity to speak with TC directly. It's a chance for you to actually have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her and learn about this new system titled My Client's Say System. I encourage you to go to the episode description and get the information you need to find out more how you can schedule that time to speak with TC directly. And then also with Universal Accounting, it's receiving a free copy of the book In the Black, Nine Principles to Make Your Business Profitable. It's the specific things that you can be working on in your company to ensure that you're growing and getting the clients you deserve 
offering quality services and getting paid what you're worth and doing so efficiently and profitably so that you can, in fact, build your business into the business that you intended it to be to get paid what you're worth. Now, with that being said, just kind of recapping a few of the things that we discussed, it's first of all, I I think very striking to me, the importance of testimonials. One, I think TC explained very well that the testimonials can so help our sales process that they complement where we're explaining not only what we do, but how people ultimately benefit from the products and services that we offer. And when it comes to accounting, where so much of our business is oftentimes from referrals, it's so great to take those people who are referring us and have them share why it is that that's so. And in doing so, I think the potential customer has a chance to uh, relate or understand what was it that the current customer was experiencing when they also chose to use our service. And then more importantly, what it is that they ultimately achieved having been working with us as a client. I think in those words, we're addressing some of the sales issues and overcoming some of the objections or questions that the clients may uh, have in a very natural way. It complements well the sales process, taking the burden off of us as business owners to have to speak entirely of ourselves and letting our customers do it for us. The other thing that I thought was very nice is how natural she made it sound as to getting the testimonials. It's just something that the people want to share. And who doesn't want to be not only just hearing the praises, but more importantly, listening to our customers and see what they really do appreciate and value, what ultimately they're paying for. And it's important for us to know and understand that. So I think all those things are great. But the last thing that I thought TC really uh, pointed out is the good people that we all get to work with and surround ourselves with, whether it be friends or family, colleagues that we're working with. We need to be with those positive, uplifting people that when we need to get up out of bed and go to work, we're excited to do so because of the people we get to work with. So with that being said, TC, what final thought might you have for us? Please make sure that your testimonials talk about the problems you solve, what sucks, not what's important to your clients. Perfect. Nice, succinct, and precise. So I like that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite you to obviously subscribe to the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Listen to the other episodes that we have to help you build the premier accounting firm in your area. And if you're interested in an, in more information on this and other principles that you can apply in your business, I encourage you to check out universalaccountingschool.com. Go to universalaccountingschool.com and you'll find some additional information there. Along with our phone number, you can give us a phone call at 801-265-3777. Do take care, have a great day, and always remember this, accounting success is universal. Take care.